final, uh, final speaker in the Imperial Ballroom today, wrapping up Casual Connect San Francisco. Um, I have a bio for one speaker here, but we actually have two, so I'm only going to be able to give you one bio. Uh, Julia Palatowska is business development director at at G5, eight, okay, at G5 yeah, Entertainment. Yeah. She has over nine years of experience in the IT telecom industry with a specialization in international business development. Since joining G5, she's played an active part in their transformation from game developer to publisher. She is focused on relations with independent game development studios and on adding new channels to their distribution network. And uh, Tatiana Timoshenko is with Julia today. <laughs> You can introduce yourself with the, what if you if you'd like. Thanks, everyone. Um, do you hear me well? I guess so. Uh, we realize how tired you must be after all these presentations on the third day of the conference. So we decided to split our presentation in two parts. I will be telling you the boring part. <laughs> About, about the company uh, and what we do for developers. And Tatiana will tell you the fun part about emotions in free-to-play games so that you have two, two girls instead of one, at least as a compensation for all this hard work you've been doing here. Uh, so a few words about G5, if some of you perhaps don't know our company yet. Uh, we're the publisher focused on uh, the games uh, for uh, mobile platforms, meaning smartphone and tablets. We focus on iOS, Android, um, Mac App Store, and now Windows 8. We're on the market for several years, and we've been doing only mobile. Uh, so we've got around uh, 500 apps on uh, iOS and Android, and also Mac App Store at the moment. And we work with um, many, uh, development studios worldwide, so most of these games uh, are not our IPs. We're just a publisher and we help with the production of these games at a certain point. Uh, but all of our partners are located all over the world and we will be happy to find some new partners with uh, great games here. Um, currently we release um, a new game approximately every week, but since now we're shifting a little bit in free-to-play uh, monetization model, uh, we will be releasing less games, but more updates to free-to-play games. Uh, we are very proud to say that uh, most of our revenues come from growing markets, so from mobile, and uh, we, are not, we do not have any, any holders in uh, stag stagnating markets like PC, and we're really proud of this. I will tell later why. Um, because of uh, regular releases and um, updates uh, and uh, many uh, great uh, developers we work with, we enjoy a very long tail of sales because we do cross-promotion and new games, they promote and sell older games. So basically, uh, even the games which we sell for three, four years, they enjoy uh, regular revenues, very stable. Every month we pay uh, royalties even to those developers who we don't work with anymore and they don't bring us new content, but they still get money from us every month for all their titles. Um, currently we've got uh, three successfully published uh, free-to-play projects. Uh, and uh, we plan to release around 10 more by the end of this year and even more so in 2014. Um, so why uh, do we focus on, on mobile and why do we think uh, everyone should do so? Um, most of our partners, they come from uh, casual PC space, as probably m many of you here. So I would like to ask you, who is developing games here? <laughs> okay, and who is developing games for PC? Hmm, quite low. Okay, and for mobile? 
Oh, it's better. <laughs> so maybe, maybe you know this already because uh, many of our partners, they still hold to um, all their platforms and uh, uh, they, they haven't seen much revenues uh, from mobile yet and they think that this market is already too crowded and there is too much competition and they don't know how to get noticed, how to get traffic and quality traffic for their games. Therefore, they, they hold the PC market, but we think it's a bad idea because it's, it's stagnating and you want to, do, to be somewhere where there is growth. Um, and growth is in, on mobile. Um, here is why. Um, this, these are just a couple of um, graphs. Uh, so this one shows that the shipment of uh, smartphones and tablets is really growing and it, it's, it will continue growing, um, we think so, we believe so, for a few more years until everyone has at least one smartphone and one tablet. Uh, we also realize that um, even uh, regular PC uh, game players, they now bought the iPads or perhaps uh, Android, um, Android uh, tablets and uh, they may sit in front of their uh, PCs and play on their uh, mobile devices. So uh, we, we actually monetize this audience. We're also very successful in monetizing uh, Android audience. Uh, many companies think that uh, on Android people don't pay. Uh, but we're happy to say that they do. Somehow we gathered really good audience which, which is paying for the games. Uh, and uh, they, they actually also grow. So since, since the uh, sales, sales of um, Android devices are growing, uh, we enjoy similar revenues on iOS and on Android. And if you have questions about it, I will be very happy to reply you by email or after this presentation. Uh, this is uh, the graph about um, mobile uh, app market, uh, which is uh, growing like more than, which is going to grow more than 10 times by uh, 2015, according to analysts. Um, and this is amazing because uh, no other game console market ever enjoyed so rapid growth. Uh, so we call it mobile revolution and we think that everyone should uh, tap it. Um, I mean, all game developers. And uh, you, if you are not developing games for mobile yet, you should really rush to do so and uh, build your infrastructure accordingly. <coughs> Uh, here is uh, the, the graphs of uh, console games and PC games. So you can see that uh, console games are stagnating and um, uh, they're probably still good for hardcore players, but we're here at Casual Connect, so I guess most of you are somehow in casual games space. Uh, and as for PC, um, it's just declining and it's, it's going to decline and probably um, even those who, who still play on PC, they're switching to more engaging, more interactive um, uh, tablets and, uh, uh, and fonts, sorry, I'm also tired. Um, so they, they have more interactive and fun experience there. Uh, this is uh, the graph for um, mobile app market in downloads. It's also amazing that uh, the downloads of apps uh, for, for mobile uh, are really growing and uh, gaming apps uh, are number one uh, driver for uh, mobile apps market at the moment and uh, again we're very proud to say that almost 100% of our revenues are coming from this market. 
Mm, uh, so here is uh, one example of um, G5's game, which was initially developed for a PC a few years ago. It's called, it was called Virtual City, and it was a great game. It was a city builder, and um, uh, we had very good reviews on, on PC initially. But it, it was, in terms of revenues, it was relatively small because it wasn't hidden object game, which was popular at that moment. Um, and it was like most popular on... What's this? What's going on? So uh, it was... Um, oh. Uh, so this, this game uh, was popular on um, like emerging markets uh, as opposed to established markets. So it was doing best results in Russia and countries like this. Uh, let's say less casual markets. Uh, but then we, we ported it uh, very, like, very carefully. We adapted it very well for the iPhone and the iPad. And it made us uh, over one million dollar on uh, on just on iOS devices uh, very quickly. Uh, first of all, because we already had some audience and portfolio, but second, we just learned that this audience is much wider than PC audience, and they are ready for more experimental genres, not just for another hidden object game. Then what we did, we um, created a free-to-play game out of a virtual city. It took us a while because it was quite a change. Uh, but we released it uh, on iOS as a free-to-play game two years ago. And uh, it was really great success. It started making money immediately. And it still makes us a lot of money because then we um, released it on Android, um, including major Android stores. And then we released it on um, a Mac App Store, and we support it for two years already with regular updates. And here are the ranks of uh, this game on, um, on iOS. Uh, so you can see that it, it has been in top 100 grossing games uh, in over 100 countries, and it's still doing really well. Um, so uh, th this, this is an example of how you can basically convert. Uh, this is an example how c you can convert your mm, non-free-to-play title into free-to-play successfully. And if you have a great game for this, great franchise, you probably should do this. This is another game which we released recently, uh, a few months ago. This is hidden object uh, a game which is free to play and which uh, is among top uh, grossing uh, top sellers in this genre. At the moment, it, it has, as you can see, it, it has reached over, um, it has reached one, one top uh, 100 grossing um, uh, games in over 80 countries. Uh, and it's still growing uh, because we just started. It, ha it is making really a lot of money because on, key, on all key territories, it's now in top 50 grossing mm, games. Uh, this is uh, the difference which we see between uh, unlockable or premium games or trying to buy games and free-to-play games. Um, and this is why we think everyone should start, I mean, probably everyone uh, here is saying it, but uh, we suggest that you should not be afraid to, to convert your successful franchise into free-to-play game. Uh, because uh, the limit, there is no limit uh, of how much you can monetize one user if you do everything right. Um, also, the difference is that you can basically improve your monetization with the updates, and this is how it works in free-to-play uh, games. Uh, here are the pat patterns. Um, on the left, uh, you can see 
uh, a free-to-play uh, versus unlockable game for, for this particular game, Virtual City. So uh, unlockable uh, was called Virtual City and um, free-to-play version is Virtual City Playground, uh, which is uh, orange line. Um, it's, uh, it's generating way more uh, and it is increasing with every update. Uh, so the message is that uh, you've got to um, use your uh, iOS as your reference platform and stop uh, treating PC as your reference platform as many developers do here. Um, and uh, please uh, make sure you build infrastructure for the right infrastructure for mobile games. So uh, use your own engine or y y use some uh, open engine, which is not black box, which you can uh, port, which allows you to port to all platforms and monetize your franchise. Um, we uh, help developers um, with the advances, with the help of our producers, with localizations and the sharing of the best practices. And now the fun part, the boring part is over. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Tatiana and I'm going to speak on behalf of our G5 Producers Center. I would like to show you one method of monetization model crafted, crafting which based on our best practices. As you know, there are several models. One of them is based on hard science-driven mathematics processes, calculation, but we decided that it's going to be too boring and we choose another method which is based more on psychology and emotions. Um, so the main idea of this method it is to determine which emotions can push player to pay you and use it in your games, of course. Um, we choose uh, best working emotions uh, which are helping us to sell games as uh, impatience, curiosity, comfort and ambitions. Uh, the list could be much more bigger but which is just four. But you should be also aware that such a monetization model can't force user to pay. The main idea of uh, monetizing emotions is to make player want you to pay so that uh, such light type of monetization um, can allow players to take their time and so they can be monetized lately. So the first, impatience. I would say that nobody like waiting. <laughs> players don't want to wait either, so they, don't, they want to achieve desirable results faster play longer than uh, game session allows, and also skip grinding, uh, skip doing some routine tasks, as in you know, harvesting carrots or searching for the dozenous, dozens umbrellas in the dark room you know, several times during the game. Um, impatient is one of the strongest emotion to be monetized. Have you ever been in a big line somewhere in the mall, waiting for a good, and then just the guy appeared and said, hey, you just want dollar and you don't want to, to wait. Will you pay? Yeah, I will. <laughs> oh, sorry. So uh, there are some examples of boosting things up. Uh, there is a screenshot from our game, uh, which we made together with National Geographic. Uh, the game name is Doomsday Preppers, uh, based on the rea reality show. And, um, here uh, you can see that instead of waiting for three hours, you can build the new floor immediately. Uh, this one, this method is one of the best monetizing functions of the in this particular game. And here is another monetization example, which became already classical for free playing games. I mean, uh, using uh, uh, limiting the session uh, with with energy or other analogs. Um, here we use this for virtual city playground and for the secret society games. And it pays off greatly because uh, usually when you run out of energy, you most likely somewhere in the middle of the process which you really want to finish. 
uh, whether it's going to be a big plan of rearranging your city or finishing some quests in uh, Social Hawk, energy becomes that wall that says, says that you have to wait or buy more energy in a shop. Uh, skipping grinding. Mm. So grinding is also a little part for most of free-to-play games. When you ask player to get more items in order to proceed, or let them just skip it. Uh, if you do correct monetization with impatient people, uh, they will definitely use an opportunity to skip any boring routine. Curiosity. So as a woman, I would say that curiosity works not only in the game world, everywhere. But OK, let's see how it works for free-to-play games and how we can use it. So one way is give player just a small piece of information about what they are going to face in the future, and they will want to get it now. For a virtual city playground, it works with unlocking new upgrades of building and factories. For the secret society, uh, it works with unlocking new location ahead of time, especially when you're almost finished with uh, collecting the picture. Comfort. If we're playing a game, we have some rules, as well as all the game have some restrictions. If these restrictions are not a critical part of your game play or, or balance, just let people to overcome these restrictions. I mean, by money, of course. Uh, let people play with a little bit more comfort and they will pay for it. For instance, uh, this is... Um, in the Doomsday Prepper game, uh, elevator upgrades one of the really important part because delivering of goods is uh, the core game mechanic. The more you progress, the deeper is your banker, and uh, delivering becomes more complicated. That's why we offer as a first step to upgrade the elevator, uh, speed up it, and instead of 20 seconds, you can deliver the go goods in four. Nice. But this is not the only mechanic in the game. So uh, you still need to tap the elevator, choose the appropriate floor, and then ship the goods. So the next step for the player who is really uh, deep in the progress is going to be buying an automated elevator. That brings real comfort. For uh, social hog games, it works with buying a hints in a game. Uh, for our game Virtual City Playground, uh, for more comfort, comfort play, we allow people to get rid of some disasters such as fires, illness, or car breakdowns. It works for 24 hours and it's good. I mean, for, from the income <laughs> purpose of view. Ambitions. Uh, everyone wants to be better, stronger, faster. Many people are ready to pay for their ambitions. In order to stimulate this feeling, you should demonstrate what players can achieve. Give them useful tools for that. And always compare them with other players. Uh, for instance, you can show how their friends performed this week, what tools do they have, and give an opportunity to compare the progress results. Uh, in free-to-play games, ambition monetization is a very profitable feature. You can see here the illustration of the secret society income before and after adding a social functionality. You can see the difference. Uh, in order to make player feel like the best player in a game, you can give him an opportunity to buy the premium goods. In this case, the words limited offer is works like a magical spell. Or just allow players to own the most beautiful items in the game, which also help with the game progress. I mean, it's not just a beautiful things to, to see in your game, it also brings you, whether it could be additional energy or extra time for a game session. So these goods are good to be bought. So uh, this is, was just a small list of emotions that your game can benefit from. So I would suggest keep experimenting and you will find the unique combination of emotion which can work for your game the best way. 
But <laughs> if you need uh, a short result, proof technologies, uh, experience producing, where well, you are welcome to work with G5 team. <laughs> So uh, we would be happy to meet new talented students. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions for the ladies of G5? I'm on. There we go. Um, it, between the emotions you talked about there, and you must have some metrics on this, what works better, impatience or ambition? Which one do, do people respond to more? Good question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you know, actually, they, they both can work equally well. It's an usual question. Um, it depends on how you implement that. And, um, it's probably best to ask our producers, if you have a game, let us know and we will introduce the guys who actually produce this particular game. Okay? Anybody else? Uh, other questions? Okay. All right, they'll be available, I'm sure, afterwards if anybody wants to approach them for uh, further discussion. Thank you for attending this last and final session. I know it's been a long three days, long day. Everyone's tired. Go to the Minamingle. The, the Minamingle. The, hey. the, the Mingle. Uh, hey. At the Continental Ballroom. And uh, get hammered. Thank you to everyone who's uh, stuck with us through these rooms, to the Video Tech, Audio Tech, Kimberly, Maria. Thank you so much. <laughs>